This lecture is going to serve as a start for our third section of the course where we're going to be dealing with behavioral finance. So we'll review expected value and then talk about the Elias paradox or Alice paradox, I never know how to pronounce it, and um, prospect theory. So when we think about expected utility and expected value, we have a lottery, which is um, a series of, un of, you know, an unknown outcome based on events with different probabilities, and we can calculate from that an expected value and expected utility. So here's an example of a lottery. Suppose I have a bingo cage with 60 red balls and 40 green balls in it. I draw one ball, which m would be an example of my event. Um, what are the probability, what are the possible events? The possible events are I can get a red ball or a green ball. Uh, what is the probability of each event? Well, there's 100 balls in total, 60 out of the 100 are red, so 6 out of 100, or 60% um, are red, so the probability of red is 60%, and the probability of green is then going to be 40 out of 100, or 40%. I can get the expected value if I want to change this into a numerical calculation. So suppose I earn $3 for every red ball that is drawn and $1 if a green ball is drawn. So the expected value is the probability times the profit. So there's a 60% chance of getting $3 plus a 40% chance of getting $1. So multiply and add. I can figure out my expected value. Now, my expected utility, in order to know that, I would have to know my utility function. So how do I feel about that expected value? Am I risk averse? Am I risk neutral? Or am I risk seeking? So the shape of my utility function um, will determine, or will be determined by my degree of risk aversion. So I suppose I have an example. Um, I offer you a choice between the two of uh, Two following gambles. Gamble A, win $240 with 100% probability, or gamble B, 50% chance of winning $400 and 50% chance of winning um, $100. If I want to maximize my expected value, show that the expected value maximizer will choose B, and the expected utility maximizer would choose A. So based on expected value, if I'm going to go for expected value, well, obviously the expected value of gamble A is 240. The expected value of gamble B would be 250. So if I want to maximize expected value, 250 is better than 240. But if I have a utility function, and this is profit to the one half, in other words, um, my utility function would be the square root of my wealth, right? Then what would I pick? Well, all right, what does this say? Expected value of A is 240. The utility of A is 15.49, okay? Expected value of B would be what? Well, the expected value of B would be 250, or I can plug this in here and I would come up with uh, the square root of 250, which is 15. So the um, expected value or so the utility of A is less than the, sorry, utility of B is less than the utility of A. Okay. Now, when we understand, so we're like, okay, well, this makes sense. You can either maximize expected value or you can maximize expected utility. We care about utility, right? Utility is how we feel about things. So let's describe what the utility function should look like. So it must be complete, meaning if L is less than M, or if L is less preferred to M, or M is more preferred to L, um, you know, there must be one of those, or L must be approximately equal to M. So I must be basically be indifferent between the two of them. It also must be transitive. So if L is less than M, or M is more preferred to L, and N is more preferred to M, then n must be more preferred to l, um, which kind of goes along here with this continuity property that since if we have um, transitivity, there must also be continuity where we can come up with some different probabilities wherein I would be indifferent 
um, between the probability of L plus one minus the probability times N would make me indifferent to M. So where I can find a middle ground in there. Also, um, they must be independent. So L, if L is um, less than M, then for any N, I must be able to come up with this situation. So I'm seeing that M is between L and N, right? So I must, if I wanna stay on this side versus staying on this side is what it's talking about there. You must still be able to define um, that you like N more than you like L. That's what that independence is showing there. Now, if those things hold, then we can either be a risk lover, in which case our um, utility of wealth will be higher the more risk that we face, right? We could be risk neutral, in which case our utility would all be the same, or we can be risk averse, in which case our utility of wealth would be less when we face more risk. So that's what we're seeing over here. And what we normally see, um, we see quadratic utility functions, we see power utility functions, there's a whole bunch of different utility functions that are out there that can describe us. But in general, we tend to assume that people are risk averse and make utility functions that follow that general rule. However, we have seen a lot of violations of this. So here is a, um, an example from Dan Ayali's website, I believe. And we're looking at subscription costs for The Economist. So you could buy a one-year online subscription for $59. You could buy a print subscription for $125. Or you could buy a print and online for $125. Okay. So well, there are surveys that were done, and you can read about this. I think that it's published in The Economist, actually. Um, surveys that were done with classes at Harvard where they asked students, which would you pick? And 16% of students said that they would pick the online only. 84% said that they would choose both. And predictably, no one said that they would choose um, print only. Like, if I'm going to get print, I might as well get the online as well. Okay. So then if no one chose that, since no one chose the online only, they redid the experiment and said, okay, well, what happens if I only offer just the online only for 59 or the print and web for 125? Now it switched. 68% of the students ended up choosing do the online only and only 32 percent chose both so here we're not seeing that transitivity we're not seeing that continuity we're seeing violations of this even though when we explained the concept of utility you're like yeah that makes sense if i prefer one thing to the other i've got to consistently prefer one thing to the other right why should it change well what we see is that it does change um, i'll provide a link to that study if i can find it for you guys Okay, so here's some experiments that have been documented leading to something called the Elias Paradox. So in this situation, experiment one, gamble A, you have a 100% chance of winning a million dollars. Gamble B, you have an 89% chance of mil winning a million, 1% chance of earning nothing, and a 10% chance of earning $5 million. So what do you think most people pick? Uh, interestingly enough, most people would prefer A. Okay, interesting. I would, I would probably say, oh no, in this case, one uh, more people would. Okay. But over here in experiment two, so most people are preferring a hundred percent chance of getting a million to a gamble where you could have potentially gotten more based on expected value. So this is um, trying to, these tests are about trying to figure out what does our utility function look like. Okay, then over here, an 89% chance of getting nothing, an 11% chance of getting $1 million versus a 90% chance of getting nothing and a 10% chance of getting $5 million. 
and here most people prefer B. But when you compare them, if you follow up, you know, the people here who preferred A and then over here they go and prefer B, again, what we're seeing is a violation of that expected utility. In other words, we see systematic violations of that independence axiom. And it comes down to how things are phrased. So I have a video here that you can watch about medical research that discusses this. But what appears to happen is that when, when participants are asked to rate an option that gives a positive outcome um, for certain against an option that gives a small probability of loss, they often focus more on that small probability of loss. So when we're talking about medical research, they have to make it super dramatic, so they talk about immediate death. And then people tend to focus more on the immediate death idea, than, uh, even though that has a really, really low chance of actually occurring. So this process led Kahneman and Tversky, who are actually two psychologists, to um, come up with something known as prospect theory. And what their experiment did was uh, rely on a series of hypothetical questions asked to Israeli students. And in each problem, the students were asked to choose between two pairs of gambles. And their choices were made over various pairs to determine um, if they violated the axioms of expected utility. And you know what? We found that they did, and they did systematically such that what ends up happening is that they overweight the probability of a loss and end up with the idea that the pain of a loss hurts more than the pleasure of a gain of the same magnitude so that they end up putting more weight on um, the probability of a loss and they don't want to lose. So the reflection um, effect explains that they have opposite risk preferences for uncertain choices. In other words, they will do just about anything not to have a loss. So that's what the rest of these are about, and I'm about to run out of time. But that's the general idea behind prospect theory, is that um, the pain of a loss hurts more than the pleasure of a gain of the same magnitude. So you're really loss averse. You want to do just about anything you can to uh, prevent that loss from occurring.